If I were to ask you to think of a hot tropical rainforest, you'd probably imagine an environment where there are plants growing absolutely everywhere. And you'd be right. In those warm, humid conditions, plants absolutely thrive in all sorts of situations. And one group of plants that we're gonna focus on in this video are the epiphytic bromeliads. Bromeliads are such a huge genus of plants with species that have evolved to survive in all sorts of situations. The epiphytic bromeliads we're gonna look at growing in this video are bromeliads that have adapted to grow as epiphytes on other plants. So in a tropical rainforest, these bromeliads grow along the branches and trunks of large host trees high up in the canopy. Now this habitat in a tropical rainforest is something that we can mimic in our own tiny tropical styled gardens. And I've been doing it over the past few weeks in my own tropical styled garden. Utilizing vertical space really helps to mimic the look of a rainforest or a tropical jungle in your own garden, no matter how big or small your outdoor space might be. To do this project in your garden, you're gonna need some bromeliads, a block of dried moss, some garden twine, and a pair of scissors. Now, if you're wondering about that block of dried moss, these are available online through terrarium shops or at pet shops where they sell reptiles. And it is a great affordable way to buy moss. All you need to do is get yourself a bucket of water and you put the block into the bucket and allow it to soak up all of that water. You can help by breaking up the block a bit, but over time, maybe five to 10 minutes, this dry moss will have soaked up all of that water and will break apart beautifully. You've then got yourself a bucket full of beautiful moist sphagnum moss that you can use for your bromeliad project, like in this video, or you can incorporate it into some of your potting mixes for specialist plants. As I mentioned at the start of this video, bromeliads come in all shapes and sizes. They have been a really popular ornamental plant in tropical and subtropical climates for a long time. So they are bred to come in all shapes and colors. In this video, I'm gonna be using Neo Regelia. Now this genus of bromeliads are great for mounting onto trees because they are small and clumping. So over time, they will grow into a nice colony onto the branch that you have mounted them on. Now, because I'm growing my garden in the UK and I'm using tropical bromeliads for their amazing colors, I will have to untie these bromeliads and bring them in to protect them over winter. To start creating your own mounted tropical epiphytic bromeliads, you're gonna to need to get yourself a good handful of that wet sphagnum moss. On top of that, lay your chosen bromeliad. And as I say, I'm using Neo Regelias because they are beautifully colored and nice and small and compact, making it easy to mount them onto the bigger plants in my garden. We're then gonna use some of this garden twine to tie the moss tightly around the base of the bromeliad. Now, because bromeliads grow epiphytically, they don't have huge root balls. And as you can see here, they survive with no roots at all. This will have been a pup cut away from a mother plant that was creating a clump around that main rosette. I found that the least fiddly way to do this is to lay your string flat across your work surface and then lift the bromeliad and the moss on top of it. You can then pull each side of the string around to the top and tie it tightly. Now a quick tip would be to not let that moss slide up too high around the base of the bromeliad. Because bromeliads are epiphytic, they don't like to be sat around moist materials. So if that wet sphagnum moss is too high up 
on the bromeliad plant, it's going to cause it to rot. We want to create just enough of a habitat at the base of the bromeliad for any new roots to form. So once you've got your first couple of loops of garden twine tied, that moss will be quite secure around the base of the bromeliad. But because this is going to be out in my garden, exposed to all elements, I want that string and that moss to be as securely held to the base of the plant as possible. So I will continue to tie maybe up to 10 loops of twine around the base of the plant. Now for me, I like to use this natural, uncoated, degradable garden twine because it completely disappears into the moss and helps the whole setup look completely natural. A lot of bromeliad growers will use something that stays put long after the bromeliad has rooted into the growing medium. Um, but for me, I'd rather do things this way, but it is entirely up to you which type of string you would prefer to use. With a few loops of garden twine tied around that moss, it is held firmly to the base of our bromeliad. Now it might look strange, but this is one reason I absolutely love growing bromeliads because they are adapted to growing to situations like this. And they actually take up a lot of water from that central rosette on the top of the plant. It has evolved to catch rainwater which sits in this central rosette so it doesn't rely solely on the water that's passing over the roots in that moss. And it's from that central pool of water that you'll also see the interesting claw-like flowers bloom. I just love these oddball plants. They look super tropical, they're really colourful and easy to grow. Right, we've got a couple now tied up around the base. Let me show you how I tie them onto the trees in my own tropical styled garden. This beautiful orange form of Acmea blanchettiana has been growing happily as an epiphyte on my laurel in my English garden for about a month now. Now this bromeliad is a very large growing plant and will eventually need to be grown terrestrially, that's in soil. But you can see how I've fixed it to the plants in my garden. I just use that same garden twine and tie a few loops around the, the moss ball and the branch of the plant that I want the bromeliad to grow against. And that's it. They are perfectly happy growing like this. Now most of the bromeliads you can see tied to this roost tree are Bilbergia. And you can see why I then moved towards the smaller Neorogelia, because these Bilbergia look a bit too top heavy and unnatural to grow as epiphytes in my garden. I have absolutely loved, however, how much them being exposed to the sunlight has intensified their colours and patterns and they are really, really popping. Now one thing that has really surprised me is that although these bromeliads are tropical and not naturally living in a British garden, the wildlife has adapted to them so rapidly. All of the snails quickly realised that the centre of the rosettes of these tropical bromeliads fills with water and is a cool, moist habitat all day. No matter how hot the sun is, there is always water in the center of these plants. So the snails quickly moved in. They don't eat these plants. That's the great thing about bromeliads. They are mostly pest free, but the snails love to live inside of them. And in return, snail poo falls into that water and the nutrients feed the plant. It's amazing. I was walking past the roost tree in my tropical styled garden and also noticed that seeds from nearby plants had landed in the rosette of another bromeliad I grow. But because it's constantly moist, these seeds germinated and I have no idea what they are, but they too are now growing as epiphytes in this micro habitat inside of the bromeliad, which is exactly 
how this whole adaptation occurs in tropical rainforests. And I love when accidents like this happen. Now, because seeds are germinating in the bromeliads, in turn, birds are now coming and they land on the leaves of the bromeliads, drink out of the pool of water, poo, feed the bromeliad and eat seedlings that are germinating. It is so fascinating to watch how British wildlife has quickly realised some of the advantages of the plants that I'm growing in my tropical style garden and I just love sitting and watching the whole interaction between the animals, the plants and of course the gardener. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video and you found it inspiring and it's shown you something that you might give a go in your own garden or as I say with your house plants. Thank you so much for watching. Please feel free to check out the Grow Paradise plant and seed shop. I will put loads of useful links in the description below. Thanks again and I will see you all in the next video.